right. Todd. We're in person, Will. We're in person. We're in Iceland, and we decided to take some time to answer some of your most frequently asked EBM-related questions. Yeah. Yeah, and I think we get these in a combination of some of the comments that we're getting uh, on the YouTube channel, and we also get some of these questions in class. So I think this is a tee-up. We probably won't tee it up this much on the next one. Yeah. Um, so all right, maybe let's get started, Will. Yeah, let's get started. So, um, of course, the, uh, the first question is, well, you know, tell us what to do. What metrics do we start yeah. with? What do we measure? Explicitly tell us exactly what we should measure in each one of the KVAs. Yeah. Which KVMs? Key value metrics should we yeah. use to measure each KVA key value area? Yeah. Why Why doesn't EBM just come with a standard set of metrics? Because I've read the paper yeah. and it has this whole list at the bottom. Should we just implement those? Yeah. And you know, actually, I would lobby to say that we should remove that list. Yeah. Um, and a lot of the reasons why is because this is so contextual to your environment, to your product, to your customers. Uh, and I think that we tend to anchor things. I think one area, I will say, Will, that I think that there could be pretty explicit measurements is I really like the flow-based metrics to fall on their time to market. Other than that, determining unrealized value, it's, current value, ability to innovate. It's hard, it's hard. And especially, you know, you can think of a ton of metrics to measure, but it also takes time and effort to set up the systems that allow you to get those things. Now, flow metrics aren't super hard to mm -hmm. get to, but when you really start getting into current value type metrics and unrealized value type metrics, you have to keep in mind that if you want to set up an entire dashboard and set of measurements, that's time you're not spending actually building things and releasing things. Yeah. So really look at your environment and see what's possible for me now, what is the least amount of effort I can do to get measurements that allow me to get started and then add as you go, as you find out what's worth looking at and what isn't. Yeah, and you know, my, my head right now is just totally focused in on, on unrealized value and current value and how so specific to a product and a customer those can be and how just by having a conversation around what we might be able to measure in that key value area, uh, CV or UV, um, could lead us just talking about what to measure has led Ryan and I onto a lot of good insights about our company. Absolutely. Sometimes it's just broaching the topic that gets changed to happen. Right? It is. It really is. It really is. And that's why I think it's uh, important to think that this is all about conversations. And that's exactly the reason why we're not going to tell you what to measure. Um, we can we can definitely help you. We can challenge you. But in a class setting and even in this online setting, we're not going to tell you this is always a good thing to measure. This is always a bad thing to measure. Yeah. All right. Yeah. All right. I think that's it. I think that's it.